Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Amy. I'm from E to B. Um, and before we get started, I just want to go over some quick housekeeping. Um, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, you can submit those in the Q&A box, and we will be sure to answer those um, at the end. And with that being said, I will go ahead and pass it over to our guest, Matt Shanahan, the Chief Strategy Officer of Lockstep. Thank you, Amy. Welcome, everybody. My name is Matt Shanahan. As the Chief Strategy Officer at Lockstep, one of the things I do is uh, host roundtable discussions with customers, really to listen what's going on in the current environment. One of the discussions that we dove into really over the summertime was all about digital transformation. And, you know, how do you sort of make that leap? Because a lot of accounting departments just have not had to think about that in the past. And one of the things that we decided to do is uh, spearhead an initiative to show, you know, what are the steps in making digital transformation work? And what are the things that um, accounting departments may want to uh, get help from others to make happen? Before we jump into that, I'll, I'll give a little bit of background on our product, Anytime Collect. It's a solution in the AR automation space that helps companies collect cash. It's a cloud-based solution, so it allows for remote work and be able to you know, work anytime from anywhere. We automate customer communications based on the aging of invoices according to the credit and collection policies that you have. We also provide customer self-service, a way that your customers can use a portal to go online, look at their statements, be able to um, pay you, and, and essentially be completely self-service access to their account. Collections activity management is really the ability to assign, track, and report on what every member of the team is doing and to give them automation so that they can do it more effectively. And then forecasting and reporting is just looking at what is the cash predicted to come in? Um, how are we doing as a team on activities? What are customers doing online? All the operational things that you need to run a collections process. We serve some great brands. We have over 180 customers and growing. Uh, we also are the leaders in ERP integration. So we connect to the most number of um, ERPs on, you know, in our space, and we're adding to that all the time. So if there's not something on here that you use, contact us, and within a couple of weeks, we can solve that. So let's jump into our topic today, really about digital transformation and why it's becoming a priority. The number one reason is cash flow is now a priority. So Deloitte had done a survey and found that over 50% of CFOs have liquidity and cash flow management as the top priority, not a priority, but the top priority. And you can understand that in the midst of the pandemic. The challenge is that the pandemic has exposed what we call cash traps in accounts receivable. So there's some underlying conditions that says, you know, accelerating cash in is harder than it really should be. So here's the state of accounts receivable in terms of how invoices, you know, are processed. 37% uh, of them are paper, you know, 39% are sent through and processed via email. Um, and 12% are done online through a portal. So digital transformation is really thinking about what are the cash traps from that previous screen of how things are done today into a world where it's easier and quicker to get your cash in the door. We'll talk about the three key elements and hopefully we'll elucidate why these are so important to do. So the first is to eliminate paper and we'll, we'll get into the details of that. The next, which is, and, and that's usually the most obvious one. The next one is eliminating personal inboxes. So this is usually Outlook or Gmail. Um, that's less obvious, but as we go through the details of it, it'll become more apparent. And then finally, getting rid of attachments on emails is a big way to make digital transformation happen and to accelerate cash. First, let's talk about paper. I mean, it's hard to believe that so much paper is still used. I mean, almost 40% of invoices are on paper. Um, and it's hard to believe because who really wants paper? It's expensive, 
I mean, nobody wants to spend money on paper, filing cabinets, envelopes, ink, printer, you know, you go down the list. It's also slow. You know, it takes days, you know, and actually in some places with the postal system having labor shortage weeks to send paper out. And, you know, if you send a paper invoice out, you're most likely encouraging a paper check back, which is also going to be slow. So it really adds days to the payment cycle. Um, it creates a lot more work because that paper has to be fil you know, filed and managed. It's, it's an office anchor. You know, if you're trying to do remote work and paper's coming into the office, that means you're going to have to go into the office. That's time um, and risk that you've got to do that, especially in the midst of all these surges. And it's and to automate. You just can't automate paper. So with that, we, we want to do a quick poll question. Um, you know, you know, these different webinars, you know, what percentage of invoices do you have that come in on paper? So we'll just give that a second. Yeah, so there's someone that agreed that, that you know, it's 40% or more, a um, couple in there at 20 to 40, and a couple in at 10 to 20. Yeah, thank you for, for sharing. So yeah, so what we, we typically see is this, um, this, notion that paper has not gone away and it does have you know a big impact so the secret to eliminating paper is really email um, and an email address so one of the things that's interesting is you know ap departments have a defined service level agreement that they need to support their controllers and cfos right so they, they want to manage their payables process with a lot of um, kind of responsiveness. So if you're able to get the email address of the AP department of your customer, you're going to, first of all, speed up the process, but also have a better guarantee that their ability to process that will meet their SLA. So it's really an important aspect of saying, do you have all of the email addresses? One of the things that's powerful about email addresses is the fact that it's universally unique, right? Um, we talked about the speed already, uh, but it's universally unique. You know you're going to be interacting with that AP department. It's ubiquitous. Every, um, every company in the entire world, every accounting system in the entire world has an email address. And so, you know, it, it's something that you can easily do. And then it does enable automation. Uh, the ability, you know, to, for instance, do mail merges and send things out in a very personalized way through email um, is powerful. You can have triggered rules about when to send it. Just like marketing has automation, sales has email automation, support has email automation, uh, accounting really does need that same kind of automation. Here's the challenge, though. A lot of times the email addresses are either incorrect or unknown. I mean, you know, if you've been in business for 20 to 30 years um, and built a process based on physical paper, it's, and it's suddenly hard to make that switch. How do you collect, you know, hundreds of email addresses and kind of bring those online? Um, and there is a way to do that. You know, we'll talk about it a little bit more, but that way to get emails from your customers by having them register them with you online is a great way to sort of overcome this barrier. Um, and then the, not only do you wanna be able to harvest those, but you wanna be able to think about validating that where you can ask your customers, hey, you know, we want you to verify that we have all your contact information correct. If you're able to do those two things, suddenly you've reduced a ton of costs out of, you know, uh, out of the process, you know, all that paper costs but you've also accelerated the cash flow, and that's a major impact to what you're doing. You've got a, a more reliable delivery process and a faster one at that. So that's step one. You know, just get rid of paper by replacing it with an email address. The next step is really think about you know the the 39 percent that's currently done in email, and eliminating personal inboxes. We did a study um, of companies or of accounting departments and tried to look at how do they structure their processing of email. 
And what we found is there was typically an email address that went to the accounting department and it could kind of shared inbox and Outlook or maybe a distribution list. But then after that, what happens is, you know, members of the team take it out of that, you know, email address there and start working out of their personal inboxes. So like Scott and Charlie, Julie and Bailey are all working together, right? But they use their personal inboxes. In fact, we found out when we surveyed um, over a thousand uh, different accounting departments, 90% said they have structured their departments using this approach. Again, either a shared inbox or a distribution list. That movement to a personal inbox creates cash traps because suddenly, and especially when you think about it in a remote environment, how do you know where certain emails are, right? So if a customer has an inquiry or a dispute, is it in Charlie's? Is it, you know, in Scott's? Where is it? And because you can't see it. It's not like you can search across all of those. Um, there's bottlenecks that arise as a result of it. If, you know, Scott is off for the day or Charlie's sick or there's vacation, suddenly a bunch of stuff stuck in inboxes that's not making progress. And the more, you know, kind of the more boxes you have, the more bottlenecks you're creating. There's certainly cracks if I, as a customer, respond to somebody who might have left the company, um, then it's, you know, kind of dropping through the cracks and, and things aren't getting followed up with. And that, all of that creates fire drills because then, you know, there's escalations. Where are certain invoices? They've gone past due 60 days. Uh, you know, all of this escalation happens and these fire drills kick in as a result of it. So, you know, cash traps, you know, from these personal inboxes really exist. And the reason that that is true is when you think about Outlook and Gmail, they're not integrated with the accounting system. So they can't do something like a mail merge, which means there's no automation on there. They can't automatically trigger something to go out based on aging, as an example. There's no visibility. I don't know who's working on what, where certain things are. And it's certainly not controlled. I can't put rules in such as assignments and priorities and things like that. Those are the challenges in, in terms of working with Outlook and Gmail and personal inboxes. So that leads us to our next poll question, just to kind of find out, you know, what do you use to process emails? Give that a second. Yeah, so just from our group here, about 85% um, roughly are using Outlook or Gmail. Um, uh, there is somebody using a support desk um, and somebody said other. So uh, thank you for sharing that. So here's the three threat process that we think about um, doing. Uh, or I'm sorry, this is kind of the key next step. You really want to think about replacing that personal inbox with a shared workspace. So how do you have activity management um, that's done as a team where there's a group, there's assignment, there's tracking of the activities. You can actually report on those. So that's an important aspect. And then there also needs to be automation that helps somebody complete an activity. Is it bringing forward, for instance, the relevant contact to complete the activity? Is it giving tools to record a follow-up or maybe to record the notes automatically as it gets done. So that kind of smart automation that allows somebody to complete their work is critical. The third step we want to talk about is eliminating attachments. So, you know, we, we talked first, stop sending paper, get rid of those personal inboxes. Now, number three is get customers online. And the way you get customers online, interestingly, is to get rid of attachments. We'll kind of break that down as to why. Um, a lot of times, you know, so there's only 12% of invoices being processed through a portal. And that's because portals fail. And the reason they fail is there's slow onboarding a lot of times. You have to set up an account, you know, with that portal um, that has to get provisioned and, and set up. Then you, um, there's the support overhead with it. So now the accounting team is responsible for answering technical questions about how do I pay online and everything else? Uh, a lot of times there's just a lack of value. What's in it? Your customers are like, what's in it for me? And all of that leads to low adoption. And those are the reasons that portals fail. And so 
one of the ways you can get over that, you know, kind of customers not going online and bring them online is to eliminate attachments because attachments are cash traps. They slow the whole process down. Um, wh one example I'll use is, for instance, when you're onboarding a new customer, most organizations will either collect information from that um, customer AP department, such as the EIN number, um, you know, obviously the primary email address, maybe a tax exemption certificate, all of that needs to be collected. And the way that's typically done is maybe to send a PDF attachment form over that the accounts payable department fills out and they attach that and they send it back to accounts receivable who then opens that PDF and hand enters it into the accounting system. That's just a lot of kind of, um, you know, back and forth when really it should be able to be done online. So if you replace attachments in your accounting emails with a magic link access to an account online, now the customers can simply click on the link and they can get the same information that would have been in that attachment, but now they're doing it electronically in a browser. And the benefit for them is that they can gain access to that any point in time. They're doing this with a secure, you know, magic link is like a one-time password access. So it's a secure access, but they're able to do it in a way that's highly convenient. It's actually even better than having to deal with a PDF and all of that. So those are kind of the three key steps of saying, how do I, first of all, get rid of paper. Second of all, move to a, a situation where personal inboxes aren't kind of getting work stuck. And then third, moving customers online so that they can process your invoices faster. Now, what's critical to this uh, transformation is adoption, the change in behavior by your customers. So you need them to be able to, for instance, give, give you their email address, um, make sure that they're using the magic links, all of those kinds of things. And the way we look at that is adoption is really what percentage of your customers have engaged you digitally? Does this become their preferred channel? Do they say, hey, I, I'd rather go online than you know, call or email? Um, and does that frequency go up? Because if that happens, ultimately that's going to reduce your DSO, i.e. you're gonna collect your cash faster. But you'll also actually increase customer satisfaction because they can do something for themselves without having to you know, call you. And ultimately that also reduces your workload. Let's talk about that adoption aspect for a, in a little more detail because it's an important part to making that transformation real. Um, this was, when I mentioned meeting with customers early on, this was the part that we really focused on of how to make digital transformation successful. Most accounting departments have never had to run a marketing campaign. Um, and sometimes they don't feel like their technology skills are quite at the level of kind of making that happen. So what we've done is worked on building a service, we call it adoption services, that helps to drive that part of the um, process. So for instance, what our teams do is they work with you to identify stakeholders in the company um, and establish baseline. Who else cares about this digital transformation? So it might be the CFO, it can be sales and account management, and then we establish a baseline. What, what percentage is paper right now? What are you doing in email? And do you have online usage? And then we establish what are the benefits that you're looking for, align, you know, kind of review what are the best practices and align on some success criteria. We launch what's called a harvest campaign. We'll talk about that a little bit more to get any missing emails or correct those. We modify some email templates so they're no longer sending attachments. Work with your accounting staff from training. So there's some changes like, you know, if you're on a, on a phone call with a customer that doesn't have an email address, how do you collect that? Um, you know, also launch a promotional campaign. Let, let your customers know this is coming. Uh, and then monitor adoption, track what's going on and kind of figure out, are there adjustments that you wanna make going in the future? And this can have a pretty dramatic impact. You know, there's the, these are some of the uh, success metrics that people want to look at is, you know, eliminating cost of paper, deflecting inbound inquiries, all of these kinds of things become critical and important. Here's an example. I, I want to kind 
in a harvest campaign. So if you're missing emails of, of customers, get those. Um, one is to send a direct mail letter as one example, or an insert in a statement that says, you know, please, Mr. Customer, in this case, dear Kennedy Corporation, um, we're moving to 100% online accounts starting on a certain date. You know, please visit our website, you know, here to register your account. And it provides the account number. And so when they go to that website, they can actually fill out the information about themselves, you know, so that they've got an online way of getting that done. Uh, you want to be able to then onboard them digitally, collect all that information. Don't send a PDF form over, right? Be able to actually let Kennedy Corporation fill in their EIN, their AP address, any contact details, and save that. That updates your systems automatically, you know, eliminating the need to do that. So you're getting accurate data without having to, you know, kind of individually enter this information. Next, we talked about modifying the communications. Here's an example of where um, the company says, here's an invoice, and rather than having it as a PDF, you can click the link, which gives you access directly to it, but it then starts to train and, and create a behavior of going online. So then customers will do other things online as well. So they'll use that magic link access, uh, maybe to contact you about a potential dispute or to make a payment or to create a promise all of that can be done here. Or at the month end, rather than saying, hey, can you send me a statement? They'll go here. They can actually look at the closed invoices and the payments and understand what those got reconciled against, et cetera. So it's just a great way that they can start to you know, change that behavior of the customer by these little things that you do. As we talked about, you know, driving a promotional campaign, the announcement email that this is going to go live, we actually have an explainer video that we host for you to, and then promote to your customers so they can see why is this valuable to them? So what's, what's the value they get out of it and why is that important? Uh, we mentioned the statement insert, making sure that something goes out, um, a corporate voicemail. So at the end of your greetings, do you have, you know, hey, make sure to uh, visit us online, especially if they're on hold. Um, the corporate website, making sure that that's very visible and known of where do I get to the accounting department here. Um, and then your email signatures. These are all things about promoting digital to bring people across. Now, I want to talk about um, monitoring adoption and what that takes. And, and a good example for us was a, a customer that we worked with uh, recently that had over 4,500 paper statements that were going out each month. Um, they would actually hold what they called folding parties, where they would get 18 people in a room, and one day a month, they would you know, kind of get these folded, stamped, ready out the door. Um, and they made a conscious choice to go digital. And we did that harvest campaign. We set up a form where they could you know, put their account number and email address in and everything else. From beginning to end, you know, it did you know, take about four months to collect all that information and, and transition people over. But just to put it in perspective, they're now saving almost $80,000 a year from that elimination of paper. That's, you know, 80,000 a year just from the paper. Their DSOs have come down dramatically. And from an adoption standpoint, and what I mean dramatically, it's gone from, I, I, if I remember right, it was over 90 to, you know, just under 60. So pretty dramatic drop in DSO. And the ability to monitor that adoption, you know, just to give you a sense, it, it, the over 4,500 is now down to 300 paper statements. So it's that kind of impact that you can have and, and, and you know, kind of drive to make this possible. Last thing we do is, you know, also work with your customers, get feedback, you know, um, what do they like, what do they not like? And how, you know, how can we make adjustments on that to move forward? So that's the adoption roadmap. And, and that's kind of the final step of digital transformation. It's not only just the technology enablement, but also getting your customers to make that transition with you. And so when we think about demystifying digital transformation, hopefully it makes sense of why, you know, why you want to replace paper with email communication, replace those personal inboxes with a shared workspace, and replace attachments with Magic Link access to online accounts. 
ultimately, it will drive these kinds of benefits. You will increase your cash flow. You'll free up staff time. Um, ultimately, there's even some, you know, depending on how much paper, there's some you know, expenses there that are freed up. So a pretty big impact that can be had. I hope you found you know, the discussion you know, valuable and, and that it's kind of given some, you know, sometimes fancy words like digital transformation seem daunting. What does that really mean? As you can see, there's three basic steps. Um, and I hope you found that to, to give you some insight and be helpful. If you'd like to you know, do more now, I encourage you to visit us at anytimecollect.com and request a demo or even ask for an assessment. We do, you know, we'll do a benchmark of where you are and what the potential is for um, improvements. Also, we have an industry-leading blog. There's lots of good articles there for you to look at and take advantage of. We have some even some things that we call like our collector's toolkit and other resources out there, and then some white papers on these various topics. And with that, we'll open it up for any questions that people might have. Thanks, Matt. Um, we did have a couple questions come into the chat. Um, the first one was, where do online payments come into play? Yeah, it's a great, great question. Um, so the, you know, the Magic Link access, you know, to, to do that self-service portal is really where you have payments in there. And so there's a couple of different merchant service providers that we support, and that's where there can be ACH and credit card payments in there. The other thing about payments, um, there's giving your customers payment options. So um, being able to do auto pay is a great example of making that turned on, and that really helps to accelerate things. Great question. Okay, we have just a couple more. Um, can you quantify some examples of benefits? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we used the, the example there of, um, you know, the, the company where they went from 4,500 um, overall paper invoices down to just 300. But another way to think about it is also, if let's say you're already 100% email, you really want to think about have your customers switch to online and focus on the, the DSO aspect of it. So by enabling electronic payments and really um, eliminating some of those attachments, we've seen organizations drop their DSO by 30% or more. Okay, I think this looks like the last question. Um, what digital adoption level should someone expect? So that has a, a wide range depending on where you're starting from and what time frame you're looking at. Um, if you're so, what we've seen is, let's say, uh, in the case of paper, let's say a large percentage of your customers are using paper. The time frame is longer because you have that notion of collecting the initial email addresses, and it, and that may take longer. So that was the example of maybe four months. But if we have an, um, other people where they, for instance, have near 100% email address already. And what they're looking at, and they were, for instance, maybe only 20% of people were using the self-service portal. They're really looking to get up into that 70, 80% um, usage of the portal and beyond. So everybody will be at a different point of that digital transformation journey. Um, and the time frame and the objectives may may change. So just to put it, you know, kind of, again, coming back to the example, you know, that's over a 90% adoption rate of just email communications in that first example. And the second example is it's getting a fourfold increase in online customer access. So those are the kinds of things that we sit down and work with you to establish what are the benchmarks that you want to achieve and how do we get you there? Great, that looks like um, the last of our questions. So hopefully that answered all of your questions and everyone found this information to be helpful. And thank you so much, Matt, um, for your time today. Thank you. And thank you everyone for attending.